For a long time, Royals fans have waited for Hosmer and Moustakis to lead this team to respectability and further. Last night, Moose and Haas gave the fans every reason to be excited, driving in all four runs and saving the game with defense in the ninth inning to beat the Yankees. Game two with New York is next on Fox Sports Kansas City. Royals baseball comes to you from Kauffman Stadium where the Royals are coming off an exciting and tense win in game one over the New York Yankees. Hi everyone, welcome back to the ballpark with Rex Hudler. I'm Ryan Lefevre and Rex last night was a team victory, but it was especially exciting to watch Mike Moustakis and Eric Hosmer. Oh, no question about that for sure, but in particular, those fans that came to the K, they were entertained by the bus driver. Mike Moustakis drove the bus, he carried the load, knocked in three runs, but what the fans saw against the beast from the east was airtight defense with a one-run lead, preserving that first win at the K. The way they did it, that is something special. And these two young left-hand hitters will get a big test tonight against one of the best left-hand pitchers in baseball, CC Sabathia. We'll be right back. When you play, students win. And by your Kansas City Chevy dealers, the official vehicle of the Kansas City Royals. Joel Goldberg will have more news on Mariana Rivera when we come back.
a little over since Mariano Rivera's injury during batting practice yesterday. Alex Rodriguez, the look on his face told all. Manager Joe Girardi running out there to help out the greatest closer of all time. He was carted off, torn ACL. Just terrible news, and that certainly has been the story throughout all of baseball. Rivera telling us today, I'm fine, I'm here, I'm happy, I'm okay. He actually wants to stay around extra just to make sure his team's all right, and he believes in the rest of the bullpen. Oh, definitely I would talk to them. I mean, Soriano has done it before, so, and David, uh, it will be a, a new challenge for them. But again, I can tell you this, though. Both, the whole team, the whole group, and we'll be okay. I mean, uh, I have confidence in them, and uh, I expect nothing but the best. Rivera saying, God willing, I will be back this year or next. We are back next with Royals baseball. Ryan and Rex coming up with the call. by Time Warner Cable, the official TV, internet, and home phone provider of the Kansas City Royals. Joe Girardi's Yankees have lost three in a row, and they have only scored four runs in their last three games. And that is not because of Derek Jeter, who is hitting over 400. He had four hits last night, and now he's one for one tonight, getting a base hit on the first pitch of the game. So Jeter is on and now the rest of the Yankees lineup tonight against left hander Bruce Chen. It will feature Alex Rodriguez as a designated hitter tonight. Jeter was the DH last night. Jason Nix is back in left field. Eduardo Nunez will pick up for Rodriguez and play third. And the catcher tonight is Chris Stewart. All right, Bruce Chin, he's going to work a cut fastball. Couple curves in a row we just saw there. First one was hit by Derek. Slider and a changeup. Going to mix him up a little bit on him. But Derek Jeter is amazing. I mean, first pitch curveball, it's almost like he knew it was coming. That's how hot he is right now. Every time he swings the bat, he's going to put it in play. If, if it's off the plate, he'll foul it. Amazing streak he's on. Well, maybe he did know what was coming because that was his 39th career at bat against Bruce Chen. That's the most at bats of any hitter. Against Bruce Chen in Chen's career. 17th hit. Curtis Granderson was one for four last night, batting at 274. And 
that's it well toward right center. Frank Coor got a good jump. And that's the first out. And Rex, let's go a little deeper with Bruce Chen tonight and take a look at the key report. Okay, his keys are to establish his fastball on both sides of the plate, although he's come out with a lot of breaking balls early against the Yankees. Mix them up, keep them off balance, and also, more importantly, keep it down. Use your defense. And the defense lately has been really good, making some key plays. And now Mark Teixeira, and to say he has done well, Against Bruce Chen in the past is a huge understatement. He's hitting just 227 this year. He has 19 at bats against Bruce Chen, nine hits, so that's 474, but six of the nine hits are home runs. Well, maybe this is a good time for Bruce since Teixeira is not really hot to start the season. Maybe it'll be different. Drilled to deep left field. How about that? Wow. Ten career hits against Bruce Chen. Seven home runs. The most home runs he's hit against any pitcher in his career. And right away the Yankees have a two nothing lead. Okay well my first key for Bruce was to establish his fastball. And. Bruce has been throwing nothing but breaking balls. That was a little slider. It's too a little bit too much of the plate. Got to be able to pitch inside effectively, knock him off, don't let him get too comfortable in there. Outside to Alex Rodriguez. I was going to ask you right before to share a hit the home run. You pointed out that he's struggling at least by the numbers as he was coming up but does that help a hitter psychologically when they're not swinging the bat well digging in against a guy and you say oh, I can hit this guy absolutely there's no question about that that that's part of the extra man the hitter brings to the plate confidence two and one two Alex Rodriguez one for three last night made the final out of the game which led to that great play by Mike Moustakis and the Royals hanging on taking game one four three. You know the, the the losing ways have turned over now now they're starting to get breaks and we knew it would happen It's just a matter of time. But take for instance that pitch that Alex Rodriguez topped to Moustakis and he made that brilliant play from third that was a hanging slider right over the middle of the plate. If it was earlier in the count Alex might have drove that ball a long way. But it's just interesting how things turn in baseball. Very warm, very muggy in Kansas City for this time of year. 82 degrees. Game started on time at 7:10, and the time of temp is brought to you by the parking spot at KCI. Look at that young moose fan. <laughs> Again, Frank Coor in right field, and there are two outs. And a look at the rest of the Royals defensively tonight, presented by Ford. Okay, Gerard Dyson, they're going with him in his eighth start. He made a brilliant catch last night late in the game. Chris Getz, go ahead, Getzy. Hasn't aired yet. Really looking good at second base with some big plays. Brian Pena gets the start as he's been catching Bruce Chin most of the season to start here. Strike to Robinson Cano. Just one for four last night. Batting at 255 and still just four RBIs on the year. The Royals are middle of the pack in the AL and fielding with 14 errors made. The Yankees, they sit atop of the fielding with, with first place position. They just made nine. Bounce to Getz. Teixeira hits a two run home run, and with CC Sabathia, Sabathia going to the mound, the Yankees have a 2 0 lead.
first inning and a look at Ned Yost lineup tonight against CC Sabathia Gerard Dyson leading off in center field. Brian Pena who's been behind the plate for Bruce Chen all year. He'd be the Royals catcher. Chris Getz. Alcides Escobar rounding out the bottom third of the lineup. And here he is 31 year old CC Sabathia all 6'7 290 pounds of him. That's right and actually he's a fine athlete so just because he's a big guy in stature doesn't mean he can't move and field his position. He's got a nice fastball that he'll use with some late life on it 92 upper mid 90s maybe a little bit 95 at times. Got a good sinker too and an excellent slider. Throw some change ups but not very many. He varies his arm angles and he'll change speeds off of his fastball and you give him a two nothing lead. That's a lot for him. He's the Royals are hoping that he's off his game. And he's ahead 0 and 2 on Gerard Dyson. Two more hits last night. He scored one of the four runs. And Dyson now with a 321 average and a seven game hitting streak. This is his first career at bat against Sabathia. And a shot off of Nunez glove and the Royals have something going in the bottom of the first. Nice stroke. Get on board. Let's take a look at the Yankees defense sponsored by Ford. Curtis Granderson. He can go get him in center field now no question but look at all the gold in the infield. Wow is there gold all over. And. Chris Stewart. Is getting the job to catch CC and that's been CC's personal catcher so to speak all year long too. Managers like to do that when, it, when they get into a groove. Good signal caller good catch and throw guy. Offense will come they hope. Breaking ball for a strike Alex Gordon hitless last night but Alex normally finds a way to get on base and he had a walk and a run scored. CC doesn't pay too much attention to runners. He he has an average move, but he will slide step home. Cut the time down. And there is a slide step as Alex hits it foul off the left field line, and Nunez running as far as he can go, but it will drop, and the count is 0-2. CC has a lot of deception in his delivery. Long, loose. Lanky arms above average arm speed has a slight little pause in his delivery before he comes home. And the ball's on you pretty quickly and he used to be a thrower hard thrower but now he's a pitcher. Alex into right center field Granderson will not get there. Dyson comes blazing around third base. And two batters into the bottom of the first. The Royals have a run back. Both hits on 0 2 pitches. He stayed on the ball well. Now that's a little slider on the outer half, but he reached out and used his hands and he guided it into that right center gap. Dyson got a score with that kind of speed, no problem. Now runner at second with nobody out. The Cano is going to give up a little ground at second base to keep Gordon tight. So that's going to give a little bit of room. Now the keys for CC or not for CC for the Royals to beat him. Hope he's not on number one. See it up just like Gordon did. Look for something up and get the big hit. We've already seen that early. Got a guy in running in scoring position. Do the best to get him home no matter how you can. Now, the Royals so far this year are a 253 hitting team with runners in scoring position. And their best run producing batters up in Billy Butler is hitting 417. Maybe somehow he can find a lane. All three hitters have been down 0 and 2. The first two got hits. And now Billy was almost hit. One ball and two strikes. And that's the first pitch out of the strike zone from Sabathia tonight. Pitching him inside. He, he likes to come in and knock guys off the plate. Okay, you see Cano really interested 
in Gordon there at second. He's given up a lot of room on that right side. And Butler likes to hit that ball that way. He took a shot at it there. So he strikes out with it out advancing the runner one away. CC Sabathia has 17 career wins against the Royals. That's the most of any active major league pitcher against KC. And of course, Justin Verlander has 14 against the Royals, but he's 14 and 2. The Royals have beaten CC Sabathia 10 times. He has been strike one with all four hitters tonight. Likes to get first pitch strikes in, and that's important. Working ahead. Now, Hosmer, he might just be hitting 196 to start the season, but he is hitting 269 with run runners in scoring position. So that's four straight hitters that have been no balls and two strikes against Sabathia. A couple of hits for Hosmer last night, Rex, and as we were talking about, we saw him lay off a pitch that he's been swinging at, that change up down and away, and his two hits. One was to center field and one was to left field. Really staying back and trying to use the middle of the field in the other way. That's the key that makes hitting coach Kevin Seitzer happy. Jason Nix in left field. That's the second out. So Alex with that RBI double was at second base with nobody out, and now he's at second with two outs. I was talking to Kevin Seitzer before the game and I said, hey, how do you go approach the big fella, CC? He said, Hud, we have to see the ball up. We have to see it up. If it's around your neck to your letters, when it comes out of his hand, it's going to be hittable. If it comes out around your letters or your belt, it's going to be down and out of the zone. He's going to get you to chase. So that's what I mean by seeing the ball up. Man, Frank Coor almost. Nailed by the first pitch from Sabathia, ball one. One for three last night. Frank Hoor hit his sixth double of the year and also reached with a walk. And that's driven into right center field again, and it is down. Frank Hoor into second base with a double. And the Royals have tied it in the bottom of the first. There's Frenchie coming through. That's what we're talking about. Get the big hits. That's a ball elevated. He saw the ball up. It was a hittable pitch. And with a runner in scoring position off of this great left hander, you've got to capitalize when you can. So, so far, so good. The Royals are, are not afraid of the Yankees or the big guy, CC Sabathia. They're taking advantage in the first inning, and this is when most pitchers are trying to gauge their pitches. That's what I like to talk about. Whether you got 11 years in, like CC, or one year in, that first inning you're trying to get the feel of things. So now Bruce Chin takes the mound. He'll either take the mound with a tie game and can start all over again, or maybe Mustakas will stay hot and get another big hit there. So it's a whole new game for Bruce. Look at dad saying, hey, your guy's up. Pay attention. Hoping that that young guy doesn't pass out from the heat. We're in that. What is that fleece on his head? Well, 82 degrees and humid. Looks a little warm. Can we get him a glass of cold water, please. But I think his dad was just telling him this guy's swinging a hot bat. Really got in on his knuckles. One ball, two strikes. Get an early look at our league leaders brought to you by your Kansas City area Toyota dealers. Last 10 days, Mike Gustakis has the highest batting average in the American League, second only to Derek Jeter. Overall, Gustakis is hitting at 318. Slider down and away strikes him out, but the Royals strike with two. A couple of doubles. Alex Gordon doubles in Dyson, and then Frank Coors double scores Gordon to tie it at two.
up Bruce Chen with two in the bottom of the first. We remind you as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Light. Alex Gordon and Jeff Francoeur both with RBI doubles to tie the game and now Bruce Chen can go back to work with the slate wipe clean and he'll get Andrew Jones Jason Nix and Eduardo Nunez after giving up a two run home run to Mark to in the first inning. Peace. Curve ball drops in for a strike. Yeah, now that was a good one there but but the rest of the Yankees early on were looking early count breaking balls. And Andrew Jones into shallow right and Frank Coor had it in his glove. Trying to take a hit away from his former Braves teammate. And he watched Andrew Jones make many plays like that when he was in center field in Atlanta. It was a jam shot. And Frenchie will tell you, and I, I just couldn't close the glove on that. He'll tell you he could have made it, but the fact is. He kept the ball in front of him, even though it didn't land up in his glove where he wanted it. And that's good. You, you don't let the runner advance. Well, Jones is on. He had three hits last night. And ball one to Jason Nix. Is called up from the minor leagues. Infielder with the Colorado Rockies. And the White Sox and the Indians, the Yankees are using him in the outfield, and this is the way the game goes. He got tested right away in a new position and made a nice running play on Alex Gordon in the first inning last night. Second batter of the game. Dyson makes the play in center, one away. The fan of the game sweepstakes is going on now at Olathe Fiat, and you could win a new Fiat 500 pop. Finalists for the grand prize drawing will be announced here on Fox Sports Kansas City. And in July, one fan will win the Fiat 500 Pop. Look for rules and enter now at Olathe Fiat. Inside to Eduardo Nunez. Bruce would like to induce a little ground ball. To Eduardo, but might be tough because Eduardo he runs really well. He, he's a hustler. Breaking balls are the pitches that hitters roll over the most times. Low fastballs work. You know, we were talking in between innings that Bruce Chen was going with more of an off speed approach with the Yankees in the first inning. And the Yankees were swinging like that's exactly what they were expecting from Bruce Chen. Yeah, it's almost like they were in Dave Island's pitching meeting. The Yankees were, but you know what? That's just baseball, and they have their own plans, and so they guessed right with some hot hitters at the top. Derek Jeter, of course, had to set the table up, but Teixeira, he'll take the homer. That's just his second one off a lefty this year. One and one to Nunez. Kind of works against the. Typical if there is such a thing Yankee approach where they take a lot of pitches early in the game. They're not afraid to hit with two strikes. They came out swinging in the first inning. Late on the fastball it's one and two. But you know Bruce. Is an extreme competitor. Having to go through what this guy's gone through all those years in triple A in Omaha and then when he gets here he has Tommy John surgery he battled back from that. You know, he, he's a competitor. He competes. That's what Dave Island likes about him the most. Caught by Getz. Throw to second for a double play. Wales defense comes through again.
Wales jersey. And for the past eight years, she has been an art teacher at Alta Vista Charter School in Kansas City, Missouri. And during her time, she has positively affected the lives of her students by providing countless artistic opportunities, including creating murals throughout the school and leading community service projects with the Westside Community Action Network. That's a good name for an art teacher, Annie Kraft, who's sitting in the Buck O'Neill legacy seat at tonight's game. Way to leave a legacy, Annie. 2-2 two, two tie. Both teams getting two in the first inning. Ryan Pena after the first pitch and hits it right to Derek Jeter, who was the DH last night. One away. Hope you'll join us tomorrow. We'll commemorate a signature moment in Royals history. Royals and the Yankees at 610. And the first 20,000 fans will receive a George Brett mini pine tar bat presented by University of Kansas Hospital. Go to Royals.com or call 1-800-6-ROYALS for tickets. Pine tar night is tomorrow, and George will be joining us shortly. Fourth inning is coming up. Strike to Chris Getz, one for three with a double last night, and also had a chance for another extra base hit in the fourth inning. But Andrew Jones ran it down on the warning track in right field, so we're starting to see more of that increased power the Royals were talking about with Getz in spring training. Yeah, you know, but that's not his main concern, although that pop will come. He just wants to get on base and utilize his speed, his base stealing ability. He'll, he'll, he'll pop a few. Good fastball. 94 miles an hour, three pitches. And Sabathia has struck out three. Okay, here he is. He's second inning now, settling down. Fastball, he's going to use that fastball a lot. He'll vary the speeds. And he's one of those veteran pitchers that will adjust as the game goes along to each hitter he's faced. Escobar now batting ninth. Be the last hitter in the order. And he drives it up the left field line. Nix picks it up on the line. And Escobar jogs into second base with the Royals' third double tonight. Speed pitch. He was out in front of it. Hit it off the end of his bat. You see him reaching for it. Well placed. Maybe Dyson can capitalize with a two out knock. It's super slow motion. Look at the head position. Head position is key in hitting. We'll talk to George about that a little bit when he comes up in the fourth inning. But your head moves, lots of times the ball will move. So the stiller your head, the better chance you have of making contact. Ball in there for a strike to Gerard Dyson. Rex Sabathia, and you talked about how he's really developed into a pitcher. This is the 10th batter he has faced. And eight of the 10 have either been down 0 and 1, 0 and 2, or 1 and 2. And Sabathia did not pay attention to Escobar. He swipes third base. CC works ahead. Doesn't really concern himself too much with the base run. With two outs, his focus right here is on the hitter. But you can get a bigger lead at steal third anyway on the lefty. On the ground to Cano, who was playing in, and Dyson is out, and so are the Royals. We are tied at two at the end of two.
run in the first. Royals got two in the bottom of the first. RBIs from Gordon and Frank Coor as we look at the Time Warner Cable pitch speed comparison. You can get downloads up to 50 megabits per second with Time Warner Cable Ultimate Internet. Both pitchers coming back and scoring, throwing scoreless second innings. Chris Stewart, Yankee catcher tonight, will lead off. He's batting ninth, followed by Derek Jeter and Curtis Granderson. I talked with Chris before the game. I wanted to just ask him from his opinion. You know, what, what's it like catching CC Sabathia? He said that it's easy. It's a real, it's a real pleasure for me. He never shakes me off. Whatever I put down, he throws. Since it's like I just sit in a rocking chair back there. Because he he has conviction with every pitch and he locates well, changes speeds. He's pretty easy to catch, he said. Osmer runs over to foul ground. The security guard clears the area. One away. Speaking of Eric Hosmer, let's check in with Joel Goldberg. Ryan, thanks. Playing first base, Eric Hosmer has had a chance to meet quite a few big names from around baseball just as they've gotten their hits and started to talk to him a little bit. So saw Jeter earlier talking to him. He said he's one of the coolest guys that he has talked to. He'll go out there and say, how are things going in the big leagues and all that. So I said, well, give me a list. Who are your favorites? And he said, Maurer and Morneau are both great. But his top three, he said, Big Poppy. Remember last year they talked about those stylish haircuts that they were getting, and he said that they got that left-handed hitting connection there. He says Jeter number two. And he says Miguel Cabrera number one, probably just because he's always out there joking around, pushing guys, and messing around. So he's had a chance to meet some of the biggest names in the game and playing the role of the mayor over there. The mayor, Sean Casey, the best. Getting on first base with him, him and I. Now I didn't talk between the lines. And I'm sure the fans have come to understand that I like to share and talk. But between the lines when I played, I didn't do it. Sean Casey would wear my ear out. And I just <laughs> I just ignored him because I was starting to you know, take my focus away from the pitcher and what I'm supposed to do out there. I didn't play into anybody's hand socializing. And you came from a little different era when you didn't talk as much on the bases. Are they going to get him out? For just the second time in the series after singling and scoring in the first. First gen, six pitches, two outs here in the third. Another catching, a catcher that talked a lot was Gary Carter. God rest his soul. He was a guy that was a chirper, and when you get in the batter's box, he would look up at you and say, Hey, HUD, how you doing tonight? How's everything going? You know, on purpose he did that. Now, he was a nice guy, but he tried to take your focus away, too, on what you were doing. Strike to Granderson. What was your last year in the big leagues? 98. 98. You ever cross paths? Well, then you wouldn't have crossed paths with Mike Sweeney when he was a first baseman. Oh, no, but, but Mike was a young player when we would come through when I was with the Angels. I, I knew all about Mike. What a, uh, he was a catcher then. He was young. Didn't, didn't say a lot. That's the way veterans liked it when you were a young player. All eyes and ears, no mouth. Please, no mouth. If we want to hear you, we'll, we'll ask you a question. And that's how we were brought in. So when we were veterans, when I was a 10-year guy, 12-year guy, that's how we kind of brought the young kids in. No rookies in the back of the bus. No rookies on in the back of the airplane. you got to earn your stripes before you sit back here. Bruce. Drops down, sidearm, gets a strike to Granderson. Three up, three down. Nice arm angle. Perfect location.
sixth inning, but now two scoreless innings as we look at our sprint you call it question for tonight. What has helped the most in the Royals five and two run has it been offense and the better average with runners in scoring position defense remember all the double plays that the Royals hit into well oh. now they're turning double plays or is it the great work of the bullpen text four three two four three two and her keyword Royals a space then a B or C what do you think Rex I'm going to go with the defense and relief pitching defense first I think so I'm just you know defense wins you games like last night if gets actually draw Dyson's play in center field that 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 was one heck of a play over his head on the run but gets his play Escobar throws it over the incredible pick at first base by Hosmer and then the, the game ending play those little things like that add up to wins big time just my opinion and the relief pitching has been outstanding. I mean, you know, they're not perfect. They're going to give up a few runs here or there. But you've got to have good relievers in this modern game now because it's become a reliever's game towards the end. Those are my reasonings. What's yours? Two and two to Gordon. Well, I'll just I'll just add to your your bullpen comment that the, the bullpen has been very good. You need to have a good bullpen, but Ed Yos really made a point before the game tonight that. It's time now that the starters start picking up the slack and guys are going to have to start pitching deeper into games six innings. He would love to see seven innings from Bruce Chen tonight and give some of the those guys out in the bullpen a break. Center field the ball is carrying and Granderson back to the warning track almost. And Alex Gordon who hit a double to deepest right center field in the first flies out one away in the third. I'll bring the kids to the game for every family fun day Sunday and the next one is coming up in two days against the Yankees at 110. The kids will enjoy face painters balloon artists kids entertainment by Radio Disney and much more. Sundays at the ballpark is your family destination. Go to Royals.com slash Sunday for more information and for tickets. I think we need to send him a cold bottle of water. Sitting right above the dugout, or is he? Let's see, uh, first base dugout sweep. Now, Dad's got a bottle of water. One and one to Billy Butler. Wait a minute. Is that the bottle of water that we sent? The dad is drinking the bottle of water that we sent for the kid? Oh, we sent three. Okay, so everybody's got a bottle of water. Yeah, I'm a father now of two boys. I worry about these things. I didn't used to care about these things. Hydration yeah. is extremely important to all people, not just athletes. Different types of hydration for those who are of age in different different sections in different ways. But look, you gotta do it. Gotta have the drinks. And now your young ones are young enough to where they really need hydration as babies. Mm -hmm. Nunez plays the Butler ground ball two down. Well, one thing about this nice warm weather Billy Butler doesn't have to do as much in between for his at bats because he doesn't have to work to get loose like he did on that past road trip where it was cool outside. He had to he had to ride that bike and get a sweat going. Now he didn't have to. It's good baseball weather ball carries better in the humidity I think. Than in the cold. Mm -hmm. Especially with a little breeze here at the K blowing from the right field foul pole to the left. Fastball is outside. Eric Hosmer flied to left in the first inning. Good pitch over the outside one and one. He worked that slider. On Hosmer in the last AB.
Fastball in there at 93. You know, we were talking about Mike Sweeney last inning, and I can't help but think every time we face CC Sabathia, I always remember talking to Mike Sweeney before the Royals face Sabathia, and I asked him, you know, well, what is it about Sabathia that makes him so good? And he just kind of looked at me sideways and said, I don't know, he's six seven and throws 96. We can start there. <laughs> I mean, how scientific do you want to get about this? Right. <laughs> so every time I write down his his uh, height and weight, I always think of Mike and his scouting report. No, no, no. What a what a <laughs> great human being he is. But you know now, CeCe's more of a pitcher. I mentioned he changes speeds off of that slider, just like that one. The previous one was a slower slider. That one was a little tighter, smaller, harder. And that makes it even more difficult as a hitter to try to, you know, hit a guy that's changing speeds off of his pitches all the time. And that's the definition of a pitcher and not a thrower. It's a nice souvenir. Doing everything he could to make contact, and Granderson runs it down in right center field. At the end of three, Royals two, Yankees two. Number five of George Brett, who is here in the booth, and we're going to talk about uh, mini pine tar bat night, which is tomorrow. George just got his. He's trying to get it out of the wrapper. Why didn't you take it out of the wrapper? Because it, it loses value when you take it out of the wrapper. I was going to go sell that thing on eBay. Today. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> now, you there were you pointing go. out that to be a true pine tar bat, that that pine tar probably needed to be a little bit higher on the barrel, right? I would say right about here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think the rule was 18 inches, and 18 inches is one inch below this. Okay. And mine was 23, so on a regular bat, that's five inches. You know, so it would be, it would be up about to here. Where so is that bat? That bat is in Cooperstown right now, as we speak. Or it might be in the Hall of Fame. I don't know because it kind of goes back and forth mm -hmm. from time to time. Okay. So home run off of Goose Gossett's just to. Get people back up to speed. Now you hit the home run. You already had history with him, and the league was upset because a lot of balls were getting pine tar on them because guys like you had the pine tar too high, and there was some disagreement as to whether the bat should be eliminated or the hitter should be out. And we all remember the famous highlight, but you. And I've learned this over the years. You've told me the story. Here's the home run against Goose Gossage. When you were sitting in the dugout, you weren't thinking that they were arguing about pine tar, right? No, I thought they thought I corked my bat, and that was a common practice back in the 70s, 60s, and I guess even the 80s. 
where people would drill a little hole in the bottom of their bat and stick some cork in there and then put some wood filler in there and supposedly gave the bat a little bit of a trampoline effect. Tim McClellan, the umpire, he's still there. Now, what are they doing? They're measuring. They, they knew the distance of home plate. You wouldn't know it by watching some of these games, but uh, <laughs> they know the distance, uh, you know, how wide home plate is. And so what inches. they did is they uh, said, okay, the rule's 18 inches. Let's see how close it is. And next thing you know, they said, well, that's a little bit more than what was allowed at that time. And I calmly walked out there and said, excuse me, sir, but did you, why did you call me out? Well, <laughs> because were you prepared for that? No, I, mean, I was sitting in the dugout, and I just got through telling some of these the guys I was sitting next to. That chokehold he had on you. Yeah, that's an up Joe Brinkman. You remember him? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was trying to I didn't know who had me in a chokehold. That's what made it look so bad. But um, I just I was sitting there and I just got through telling somebody if they call me out for using too much pine tar, I went out and killed one of those SOBs. And sure enough, as soon as I said that, they called me out. And then I tried to stick up to my words, you know. Well, the other part of the story isn't told very often. You weren't there to see it because you were still on the airplane, right? Because you were make thrown out. Game. Make a game. makeup. For game. some reason, they threw me out of that game. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is it. We, we got to go over some of the details here because. The, when the when the ruling was reversed, you had to go back to New York to replay the game from after the home run. Now, run us through who was playing where. Billy Martin. Well, I think Don Matting. I think Don Matting was playing second base. Okay. Um, Gidry was in right field. Okay. I, I didn't go to the game. I was out with the TWA rep. With, that's who we flew exclusively at that time. So what was Billy doing here? Well, the uh, the Billy said that I missed first base. And I missed second base. I didn't touch one of the bases. And so the umpires, there was a different crew that came in from what I was told. And they had a sworn affidavit, for, uh, affidavit from the other umpires saying that I touched all the bases. So because those guys obviously were not there. And so how are they going to rule if I touch the bases or not? And then once all that went through, then it was play ball. And Quisenberry came out to get right there. Oscar Gamble to ground out to Frank White to John Wathen. Game over. And I met everybody back on the plane and we flew to Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> that was really heads up thinking by the umpires in the league. Yes. To oh. think to themselves, okay, what's Billy going to try? He's going to try something. Mm -hmm. Right. Did but, you, it, but it's funny, you play 20 years and that's what you're known for. Right, George, you, you, know? have, you didn't <laughs> have any idea at the time that, no. that, you were, that, that was going to be so famous. No, 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 no idea at all. Okay, I got a question. How did you get around? On Goose Gossett's fastball at your neck. That's what that ball you that was, It yard. was up and in. And, you know, oh. I never said two words to Goose Gossett until after we retired. I never really, and I was a lot like you, Rex. I didn't like opposing pitchers, and I don't think opposing pitchers like me. So I really never went out of my way to be nice to them, and, and they didn't to me either. But uh, uh, once we, we both were retired, I was in spring training one year, and, and um, I got a chance to meet him. He was a really nice guy, and he told me he was opening a restaurant in Colorado Springs, and he said, I'd love to have a bat of yours in my restaurant. So one day in spring training, I got a brand-new bat out, and I put pine tar on it for five hours, and it was, a, <laughs> it was 28 inches high. <laughs> and then I wrote, Goose, this is not the bat, but I, I wished it was or something. He had it in his restaurant. Uh, he and I have become great, great, great friends. Mm -hmm. He's really a good guy, and every time I see him, he says, I was trying to hit you in the neck with that ball. I just didn't get it inside <laughs> far enough, and I still can't believe you hit it out. It the second most famous home run you hit out of, off of Goose Gossage. Right. First one being in the 1980 playoffs, and um, this is a bit off subject, but you brought this up, that you can't believe that you got thrown out of the game for <laughs> running out and arguing like that. Rex and I were just talking the other day about how the games change and one of my favorite highlights in Royals history is you when you went sliding into third with Craig Nettles right. during the playoffs and you guys are throwing haymakers and the thing that's never discussed about that is neither one of you got thrown no, out of the game didn't get right. fined didn't get thrown out of the game <laughs> nothing they left us both in the game and it was the fifth and final game of the playoffs in 1977. And I slid in third and uh, hit a triple off Gidry in the first inning and it was a bang bang plane I slid in and kind of popped up. And knocked Nettles back a little bit. He stepped back and kind of just kicked me right in the chin. And I and I saw a shoe come up and I'm going, what 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 the, what was that? And I got up and just threw a haymaker. And the next thing you know, Thurman Munson was the catcher then, and Thurman kind of got on top of me. And um, you know, I, I heard some stuff that there were guys kicking me in the head on the bottom of the pile and stuff. But it was uh, it was. Uh, 
I mean, sometimes when we play the Yankees, I wish I was still playing. Mm -hmm. If we're playing Cleveland or Chicago or Texas, I'm glad I'm not playing. But whenever the Yankees come in town, I want to put on a uniform and go out and compete against them. I, I came up behind Willie Randolph in 84. He tells me, hey, kid, come on. Come over here. I got to school you a little bit. When the Royals come to town, there's two guys that will end your career. And they don't, not intentionally, but this is they, how hard they play. George Brett and Hal McRae, when they get on first base, you need to know that they're coming after you. And so I said, okay, thank you. Fortunately, I, I never was out there when you guys were on there. But you know what? Later, I, I like that. I like that confrontation. It was fun. Well, you, you sit here, you, you sit here and you watch the games now, and, and, and it's not everybody, but I'm sure Rex, the way you played and the way I played, very similar. You know, like uh, Bryce Harper. They showed him today hitting a fly ball on ESPN this morning, hitting a fly ball to left field, and he ran three seven to first. Love on a routine, and yeah. I like that stuff. Right. And I've watched some of the guys tonight, um, uh, older guys, I'm not going to say any names, get a base hit, and I, they don't even make a turn at first base. Mm. And that just drives me crazy. It's hard. It really does. It's hard, but you know, as a broadcaster, Joe Torre helped me out, although I, I always need help, but he would say, hey, Hud, if a guy doesn't hustle, you need to call that out. Yeah, I, I well, I don't do this for a living. You guys do it for a living. Oh. And some breaking news. Always, I got breaking news. <laughs> okay. Jin Wong, you know Jin. Yeah. Jin just signed me up on my first Twitter account. Oh my! I well, got a Twitter cool account. Be, watch out, man. I, what's, I what's just sent my first one. What's the name? <laughs> I think it's George H. Brett. Okay. I think I just sent my first one out at Royals game with Jin Wong. He set me up. Royals two, Yankees two, bottom of the third. Wow. Is that good? Nice. Wow. First Wait, tweet. Welcome. My welcome first in. tweet. That's good. Are you a tweeter? Uh, sometimes. Are you a tweeter? No. I'm okay. not. Do you have a computer yet, Ryan? I do have a computer. You got me confused with somebody else. <laughs> hey, George, thanks for coming up. Okay, yeah. Pine I'll be here tomorrow night. Tomorrow, tomorrow night. Let's we'll give see you go deep with this. How many people coming? 20,000. 20,000 of these things to be given away tomorrow. Looking forward to it. Fans and others at Coffin Stadium tonight on a warm, muggy night. And the Royals and Yankees tied it two to the bottom of the fourth inning. Royals trying to build on that exciting win last night. Going down to the very last pitch. So the Royals now have won five of their last seven games. And remember all the close games they were losing during that streak. Well, the Royals. Lost their first six one run games, and now they have won three straight one run games. Hey, that's good. That's good for their confidence, especially last night's first home win. That that was huge. If they could hold on to that one. Frank Hoor grounds out to third, so he is one for two.
Royals baseball is brought to you by your Midwest Ford dealer. By Panera Bread, 23 locations coming soon to Brookside. Visit us online at PaneraKansas.com. And by AT&T, the world's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. Mike Moustaka has struck out against Sabathia in the first inning. Noticed how things have kind of settled in here as the game gets going. The first innings are the innings to capitalize, and beating CC Sabathia, you got to be able to get the big hit. And they did that early. Now they're going to try to build again by getting some guys on. It's a good breaking ball. Moustaka is pulling off of it, trying to pull it. One ball two strikes and the big hit that the Royals got tonight was back in the first inning Jeff Francoeur with a two out double to tie the game at two but now Sabathia has retired eight of the last nine. Still one ball two strikes. Pretty awesome to have George Brett up here talking about. This pine tar incident that is legendary now. Tim McClellan, that home plate umpire, just did his 4,000th game the other day in Detroit against the Tigers, and the Royals are playing. And again, Sabathia gets Mustakis chasing a slider down and away. Strikes him out again, two down. Well, ladies, join us at the ballpark on Friday, June 1st for our annual Girls' Night Out presented by your Kansas City Chevy dealers. The first 10,000 ladies will receive a Royal Sun Hat. Gates open at 4.30 for pregame activities and the outfield experience, such as a fashion show by Macy's, dueling pianos, cooking demos, fragrance samples, and much more. The night benefits the American Heart Association, so we hope to see you on June 1st. So make it Sabathia retiring nine of the last ten as Brian Pena steps in and rounded out to short in the second inning. Brian trying to bust out of an 0-4-11. No balls, two strikes. Okay, the first pitch to Brian Pena, he stood there like he wasn't even going to attempt to swing. That's because. In his first at bat of the night, he swung at the first pitch, so he definitely was not going to swing at that first one. He's just trying to see a few pitches. Now he's down 0 2. And as typical for CeCe, he's been ahead on almost everybody. On the ground to Nunez. So Sabathia is hitting his stride. The Royals have one hit since their two run first inning.
is the score. That is a Yankees bullpen without the greatest closer of all time, Mariano Rivera. Of course, everyone has seen this now, tearing his ACL during batting practice yesterday. And Joe Girardi really not tipping his hand, saying it could be David Robertson in the closer's role. It could be Rafael Soriano. But this was obviously a shocking story, not just for the Yankees, but for fans and players all around baseball. And, guys, it was interesting because, you know, he's only one of four active pitchers from Panama in the big leagues. The other, one of the other ones happens to be on the mound right now, Bruce Chen. And I talked to Bruce about it, and his reaction was the same as everyone's. But he's known Mariano a long time. Now, neither one of them go back to Panama and spend too, too much time there. They don't hang out. He said, I don't even have his phone number. But he said they used to work out in the offseason back in the mid-'90s before either one had made the major leagues. They were both minor league starters at that point, and they used to work out. And, of course, he said back then Mariano was – you know, really no name in Panama. But I said, well, who, who would be a bigger sports name in the history of Panama? And Bruce said, maybe Rod Carew, but really the biggest name other than Mariano would be Roberto Duran, the boxer. And he said after that, and maybe before that, Mariano Rivera, now the most famous sports athlete of all time, guys. Well, it, it, was, it was troubling to see that for anybody. But then when we found out, and Ryan and I were sitting up here in the booth, and we saw that out there. We got our binoculars out, and I said, oh, no, I think it's Mariano. It was, it was, it made you sick to your stomach to see that. That guy is such a, a, a class act, sweetheart of a guy, very classy in everything he does. But Ron Guidry, Mark Langston, two of the best left-handed pitchers athletes that I've ever played with would be in the outfield and I would watch Ron Guidry jump over the wall as Bruce gets a, a nice strike out there. Guidry would go over the wall and bring back home run batting practice home runs. Very active out there. These guys that are athletes like Mariano they like to participate and I it would blow me away and I go look at these guys out there. So really they became players during batting practice. This happens a lot now not every pitcher is athletic to do that. And don't what they call power shag. But it happens every day at big league ballparks. Pitchers participate. Now what was interesting playing in Japan. We took batting practice out of two two batting cages. So there were balls everywhere and not a pitcher to be seen. They had balls in the back of the wall and they had kids that they hired off the street to pick up the balls. Afraid the pitchers would get hurt. Right. So the Japanese they, they didn't participate in, in BP like they do out here. Well, and it's a way for them to break up the monotony. I Maybe mean, the hitters get to hit and the fielders get to field ground balls and fly balls. And it's a it's a fun way to stay in shape, get your conditioning in, chasing down fly balls in the outfield. Right. And sometimes they just go out and shag. Maybe they don't feel so good. They'll just kind of take it easy. But sometimes I go, hey, how you doing? HUD, I'm gonna put a power shag on today. That means they're going for it. Now, if, if you're an outfielder, like I was, and I would go out and get my work, I would tell the other pitchers that were standing out there, fellas, you want me to catch that ball at 7 o'clock? Let me get my work in. Okay, I'm going for the ball. No collisions out here. I just want to let you know to stay away from any ball that comes my way. So you had to let them know because they were going to run me off of the balls. <laughs> Hey, Rex, it was interesting today, though, talking to Bruce, because Bruce said that that's one of the things that he looks forward to all the time. I mean, pitchers run the day after they start, but he said that's the way he gets his conditioning in, and it, it keeps him in the game, and he, he really enjoys that. And it was also interesting hearing Mariano this afternoon. He was talking to the media, and Nate Bucati was down there, and, and I was down there, and he was saying, he, Nate had asked him, he said, how many times have you gone back for a ball like that in your career? And he said, probably four or 500 times, and, and, he, and he has no regrets. He said he, he'd do it again. Well, can you think of another time of a pitcher blowing out his knee, shagging fly balls? I mean, it's just never. You, it's a fluke injury. You know what it is, Ryan? It's like the Kendris Morales injury at, at home plate with the celebration. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, you could see that 10,000 more times, and you might not see it. Right. See the kid, Laurie, for Toronto after his walk-off homers, how high he jumps on home plate. Mm -hmm. at, at, after Kendry Morales, Kendris Morales, after that happened, there were no plate celebrations until he touched the plate and then they would hug it. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it maybe the day after or two days after the Angels had another walk off home run and, and everyone the, just stood about was, 10 feet away from it, home plate? It was the next night. Yeah. 
Nunez is running. And Pena's throw is a little late. That's the fourth stolen base for Nunez. Runner at second with one out. Okay, Nunez might be the only Yankee that's really running. I mean, he's, he's one of the guys that will attempt to steal. And at least for now, Yankees might have to be a little creative in trying to find ways to score runs. They've lost their previous three games and only scored four runs over that stretch. And they got two very quickly tonight on the Teixeira home run, but now three scoreless innings against Bruce Chen. Deep short, Royals have a chance for an out at third, but Escobar throws across the diamond to get Stewart two away. Escobar thought about it. Going to third base, but he said, hey, we already got one. Let's get two outs for sure. Well, interleague play begins for the Royals coming up on Friday, May 18th, as the Arizona Diamondbacks will come to town. It's Buck Night and Fireworks Friday. Hot dogs, peanuts, and soft drinks are just $1. And then stay after the game for Friday Night Fireworks presented by High V and Pepsi. Go to Royals.com or call 1-800-6-ROYALS for tickets. Okay, interesting how Ned Yost is coming out. There's not a Royal reliever up in the bullpen. But this meeting here is all about Derek Jeter and what they want to do. Guy's so hot right now. Do you take a chance, pitch to him, or do you walk him with first base open and do Granderson, face Granderson on deck? I mean, that's how hot he is. And he's one for two against Bruce tonight, swinging it. Chen's first pitch of the game and singling. And then he scored on the Teixeira home run. Hey, okay, Fox tracks will show you how he's been pitching Jeter. That was before Jeter batted in the first inning. So now he has 40 career at bats against Bruce Chen and 17 hits. One ball, one strike. And you kind of have to pick your poison here, Rex, if you just go by history. Jeter hitting around 440 against Bruce Chen. Curtis Granderson waiting on deck is six out of 14 with a home run. And then we've told you what Mark Teixeira has done against Bruce Chen. Mark Teixeira is 11 for 21 with seven home runs. Well, I, I liked. How Ned Yost came out and made a, a personal visit to talk about the situation just a little bit and also to reinstill some confidence in his veteran lefty. Go get him. Execute some pitches. He's hot now, but look, uh, I like your chances of getting him out with two outs here. Go get him. And that's how a field general can motivate his troops. I don't I haven't seen all year Ned come out and do that. Dropping down and Jeter fouls it away and getting back to Fox tracks again and the pitches that Chen's made so far he's right around the edges of the strike zone nothing right in the heart of the strike zone. No but when you're hot like Derek Jeter you can reach outside of the strike zone and get a base hit. He's being aggressive. That's that's how you have hitting streaks, and that's why you lead the league in hits. He doesn't get up there and take. He's not looking to walk. He's looking to hit. He's aggressive. And has always been a good hitter with two strikes. Two and two. Okay. Good inside pitch for effect. Grounded right to Escobar. Jeter is out. So are the Yankees. So Bruce Jen giving up two runs in the first inning. And now he's turned in four straight scoreless innings.
before we get to the bottom of the fifth, here's our AT&T trivia question for tonight. Who is the only American League player with a two-hit night at the 1973 All-Star Game here at then Royal Stadium? Well, I know that John Mayberry, who was representing the Royals, was one for three. So it's not Big John. One and one to Chris Getz. Question would be what Royals were in the game. John Mayberry, Cookie Rojas. That might have been it. Getz goes the other way. Nix was playing shallow, but he's done a nice job. Normally a second baseman, utility infielder, filling in and left for the Yankees. And Makes the play on Getz. Yeah, you know, he, that was a tough ball, too. The one right over your head. So he'd almost twisted him around here. Watch him. He almost twisted up. And that happens when you don't have a lot of experience in left field. However, Knicks impressed Joe Girardi in spring training. They put him out in left field, and he did a nice job. He made some several running catches. He showed some good athleticism. And when you're a good athlete, you can do that. That's why he's in during the regular season. What he did on in spring training impressed him. Nunez on one hop takes care of Escobar who doubled in his first at bat and now Sabathia has retired 12 of the last 13. Well bring your kids to the largest educational field trip in town. It's Thursday May 17th at school day at the K and you can come out and learn about the weather with chief meteorologist Mike Thompson and see demonstrations by the Fox 4 weather team starting at 10 a.m. Then you can stay for the game as the Royals take on the Baltimore Orioles at 1:10. School day at the K, Thursday, May 17. Speaking of Fox 4, it's always good to see television legend and former Fox 4 news anchor Toby Cook here in the Royals television booth. Hard-working dude. Toby stopping by because. Growing up in Independence, Kansas, was a huge, huge Royals fan. And uh, reminding me that Amos Otis was also on that 1973 All Star team. So John Mayberry, Cookie Rojas, and Amos Otis were the three Royals representing the team in 1973. So, gets us back to our ATT trivia question. And of course, Al Broughton, our associate producer, always likes to begin with in the house. And maybe this particular player isn't in the house, but was it Cookie Rojas or Amos Otis? Two and two on Gerard Dyson. CC using a majority of his sliders now. And Kevin Seitzer knew that before this contest. He said. CC's been going with a lot of sliders and he's got two different kinds. One's a little slower than the other. At the knees for his fifth strikeout. And now Sabathia has knocked down 13 of the last 14 Royals. Still tied at two.
And coming up this Tuesday, the Boston Red Sox will be in town, and that'll be game two of three. It is Nurse Appreciation Night. Thanks to Tevin Neuroscience, nurses can get a $10 ticket in the field plaza by going to royals.com slash Teva. Yankees here for four, Red Sox for three, and then the Royals will hit the road to Chicago and Texas. And it's the only trip this year to Texas? And just two games. Very unusual, but you know what? As hot as that place is, I don't think uh, I'll miss that too much. Yeah, and, and going in May will help. And I don't know how much you want to play the Rangers this year with a 17 and 8 record. Not very much. Granderson to Shara and Rodriguez in the sixth inning. So a couple of veteran pitchers giving up runs in the first inning and nothing since. And two very competitive athletes. Also, both guys have a, a nice rhythm to their game. They get the ball, they get their sign, and they throw it. Not too much time in between pitches. Popped up. Escobar for out number one. Curtis Granderson is 0 for 3. Our AT&T trivia question. Who was the only American League player with a two hit night of the 1973 All-Star game? What do you think? Amos Cookie. Otis? Cookie Rojas. Cookie Rojas. Two for two with an RBI. A-O. Wonder who is the MVP. Escobar throws out to Shara, who makes a rare out against Bruce Chen. So Bruce really wanting to go deep and picking up the team in the bullpen, and he's got two outs with four pitches in the sixth. 78th pitch coming, but I talked about his rhythm. How important that is to keep the infielders on their toes, the game moving. Good body language, good mound presence. I've, I've mentioned it a few times about how he chooses gum. Hitters just look at the pitcher. They, they so so I can just tell you what, what he looks like, and he looks confident. He has good mound presence. They call that. And he can pitch and chew gum at the same time. <laughs> yeah, which a lot of guys can't do. I, uh, you don't see many pitchers that chew gum like that. <laughs> Very high in the air to center. Dyson reads it. And a very quick hitting for Bruce Chen in the sixth. Testing is Nanine Castleberry from Lenexa, Kansas, with a lot of money out there. 
The Royals hit a home run in this inning. Nanine will win twenty three hundred dollars. If the Royals hit a grand slam out of the park, it's worth twenty five grand from Sonic and the Kansas City Royals. Good candidates coming up. Alex Gordon with four home runs, Billy Butler with five, and Eric Hosmer with five. CC against left handed batters this year has given up three home runs. Righties have taken him deep twice. So it can be done, but you got to look up, like Kevin Seitz has said. Ball starts up around your shoulders to the letters. That's a hittable pitch. Now that one was up there, but it was inside. Gordon spit on it. Another term for take. Just sounds a little spicier than took it for a pitch, right? Yep, it's just baseball lingo. Nothing I invented, just passing it on to the folks to educate them about what goes on down the field in the dugouts. Ooh, man, that's a tough spot there. If he hits that spot all night, and he's been doing a lot of that very regular, Kevin Seitzer knew it wasn't going to be easy for his hitters. Wants the fastball up. And it is up and fouled away. And Chris Stewart shakes his head. Yes. That's where I wanted. And that sets up the next pitch. When you're constantly ahead, like CC Sabathia has been all night long, you set guys up with the previous pitch. Look at Stewart. He's, he's looking at the hitter. Two and two. Stewart liked that pitch. He, he was shaking his head while getting a ball from home plate umpire Phil Cousy. Stewart talked earlier about how much he enjoyed catching CC. This is, he's, he says it's it's total joy. It's easy. Still two and two. Sabathia has retired 13 of the last 14 Royals going back to the first inning. Okay, look at look where he's missing. He's missing hard in, soft away, couple over the middle. Gordon's fouled off. Just missed outside. Running it up there at 95. Alex having a good at bat. It's three and two. Do it again. Okay, this is a nice at bat. Gordon's got going here. Takes a deep breath, exhales, knows it's not easy, but these guys are competitors. They like to compete against the world's greatest and CC's in that category. And just two days ago, they didn't beat him, but they won a game that Justin Verlander started. The bat went farther than the ball in both directions. The barrel under Robinson Cano's feet, and then Alex threw the handle over the Royals dugout. Wow. Talk about a buzz. How about CC Sabathia first pitch strikes? 19 on 19 hitters, 11 first pitch strikes. Okay, we're gonna show you six of them here. Look at look at how he's painting. First pitch, he's getting ahead of guys. He's only been down in the count two and zero on just one hitter. And that was Frenchy. When you work ahead, you're constantly putting the hitter on the defensive side. He's having to hit your pitch. Billy has struck out and grounded out 0 for 2. It's the whole key to pitching. Get the hitter before he gets you. One and one. Chris Stewart was sitting up right in the middle of the plate, and CeCe put it on the outside part of the plate, and Chris Stewart shook his head. Yes. Staying away, and he got the call. 88 on our slider on the black part of the plate. When you hear that term black, 
You don't see it on the home plate, but there's a about an inch wide of black around every home plate, but it's covered up. You don't see it. So a hitter will come back and say he painted me on the black or he got the black. That's what that means. So it wasn't over the white part of the plate. It was right over the, the one inch edge of the plate. That's black. We'll, we'll undig it one of these days and show the fans. Three balls, two strikes. And the reason that it's not exposed is because it's in a little slope. It's on a little slope, a little angle. So if a guy slid into home, it could catch a cleat and hurt it. And see, that's why it's covered up. And it's just flat there. One hop to Jeter. So Butler is 0 for 3. Talked about Bruce, Bruce Chins. Nice rhythm. CC Sabathia has the same thing, same kind of rhythm. And that's another thing that Chris Stewart shared with me earlier today, talking about his rhythm and how he just gets the ball. I give him a sign, he never shakes me off. And he comes right at the hitters and gets the ball, keeps the rhythm going. These are all keys for pitchers to succeed. That's why this game's moving at a good pace. Curveball aside to Eric Hosmer, who has flied out twice to center field in the third inning, and a good running play by Curtis Granderson. Two and zero. So just the second time all game he's been two and zero with a hitter. Let's watch CC's glove before he goes in. Watch it where it is. Okay, he holds it there. Hitters are watching this. Holds it right there, wide open, wide open. So a hitter cannot read where he's putting his fingers on the ball by the way his glove moves. He holds his glove in one position there, and that way hitters can't see you digging in. Sometimes a guy will will, will flutter his glove, or he'll go wider or narrower, and hitters pick up on that. CC's the same way every time. Osmer getting the green light on three and zero. Granderson back to the track at the wall. Didn't get it. Osmer's going to try for three, and he slides in with a triple. Excellent drive. He's able to get on top of this high fastball. That ball was elevated. That's above the belt around the letters, and he got on top. Granderson made an excellent effort to catch this ball, but Hosmer didn't sit and watch it and take his time. He was running hard out of the box. Now, you can't expect a guy like this to make the play. Actually, it was over his head. So it was a great effort, but Hosmer got to second base and made up his mind, I'm going to third. And he just kept going. As he undressed himself there with that head first slide and got dirty. And this is a little two out big base hit here. We'll see if Frenchy can get it a big hit here. Larry Rothschild's going to come out and talk to the big fella. We've seen two visits to the mound tonight. One by Ned Gillis to the other here now by Rothschild. By the way, this will be the first. 20 pitch inning of the night for Sabathia. Frank Coor doubled in the tying run in the first inning. Sabathia jumps ahead, and then Frank Coor in the fourth inning grounded out to third. Sabathia had retired 15 of 16 before the Hosmer triple. 0 oh 2. Okay, first inning. That's when you get a guy. When the, 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 the guy before he settles out. Fran, French goes ahead, kept his hands inside the ball. He fought it off as a good inside out swing. Perfect touch. So we're going to knock in Gordon. Doesn't necessarily need one of those here. How about just a doinker? Fastball got a lot of the plate, but Jeter cuts it off. Throws out Frank Poor and the Royals leave Hosmer at third base. And now at the end of six, we're still tied at two.
by Thoroughbred Ford. The best deals on new Fords are at thoroughbredford.com. By Steel, find a servicing steel dealer near you. Visit steeldealers.com. By AT&T Uverse, the new wireless receiver from AT&T Uverse. Visit AT&T.com slash free your TV, rethink possible. And the State of Missouri Tobacco Quit Line. Call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Good hitting in the first inning. Mark Teixeira hit a two-run home run for the Yankees. Alex Gordon and Jeff Francoeur with RBI doubles in the first. And now the game dominated by pitching. As Bruce Chen has given up just those two runs. And now five scoreless innings since. He has only allowed three singles since the to share a home run in the first. He has gotten Robinson Cano out twice tonight with a ground ball and a strikeout, and that's ball one. Being Bruce's last start, he didn't go very long. He didn't make it to the third inning. He got squeezed by the umpire. And when, what that means. Not that, to name anybody, but, no, no, it, was, no, no but it was Larry Vanover. Oh, you did it. I didn't. It was. That's when it, when you use that term squeeze, that means he's not given anything. So he was throwing pitches right on the corners and he wasn't getting it to him. So they, they hit him. And I made a comment that. Bruce, the ultimate professional, would not blame the umpire. And sure enough, he didn't. He took responsibility. Kept his head up, said, when I get my next chance, it's going to be against the Yankees, I'm going to bring my game. He got two off him in the first and didn't rattle him. Like like the last game, they hit him hard too, but he keeps his focus. He doesn't show bad body language when they hit him. Hitters can't read that. Caught by Moustakis, decides not to throw to first. Andrew Jones is one for three. Let's look at tonight's AT&T U-verse reverse replay. Nice swing. Nice and easy. Didn't try to do too much. You let the 95 mile an hour fastball. You beat your power. Almost went out of the yard. Another foot he had one. Instead, he'll take three. Blocked by Pena. Ball one on Jason Nix, who is 0 for 2. Well, the first objective, obviously, is to win the game. But objective number two for Bruce Chen was to go deep into the game and he's two outs away from giving the Royals seven innings. Popped up. Brian Pena was running toward third base just in case the ball dropped. I don't know if he's just trying to clear the area for Hosmer and Mustakas, but he did clear the area. And Mustakas coming in to help him out. Two down. Easier play for the corners. Mustakas yelled louder, and Hosmer yielded to it. Eduardo Nunez plays at third base tonight, making Alex Rodriguez the designated hitter. And that shot to right field and over Frank Poor's head. Cano is to third. He will come to the plate. The Yankees are in front. And Eduardo Nunez picked a good spot to put an end to a personal 0 for 19. And that is his fifth RBI of the year. The minute that ball was struck. I knew that Frenchie couldn't catch that one. Out, outside pitch, he went with it, short, quick swing, and the ball was tailing away from Frenchie, and it took that carom off the wall 
just long enough where Frenchie couldn't hit the relay man and get Cano at the plate. So Nunez getting some playing time in this series as Joe Girardi has tried to help the left side of his infield. Derek Jeter was the DH last night, so Nunez played short, and now Alex Rodriguez DHs tonight, and Nunez plays third. Nunez has been getting some big hits while he's been in there too. Now there wasn't a runner in scoring position, but he is four for five with runners in scoring position. Escobar going up as high as he can go, and the Yankees. Have a couple of two out runs and now they lead 4 2. So the number eight and number nine hitters coming through. Chris Stewart picks up his fourth RBI of the year. Another timely hit on the ball up. Now it was on the outer half. Pena was going way outside for it. Stewart just reached out. Got it up. Escobar, he's got some hops. Just can't go that high. Tim Collins warming up out in left field for the Royals. Inning began with Robinson Cano, a solid base hit to right, and then Jones lined to third. So the first out was well hit, then the pop up. And now Nunez triple and Stewart's single, bringing us to Derek Jeter, who is one for three. Balls, two strikes. Good slider there. Late breaking. That, that had some bite on it. That was his 90th pitch. Might have been his best pitch all night. See if he can do another one. One and two. Who's trying to go seven innings for the third time this year? Went seven innings against the Tigers here at Coffin Stadium and against the Blue Jays at Coffin Stadium. Last year, three of his final four starts, he went at least eight innings. Two and two on Jeter. Now those last two hits by the eight and nine hitters of the Yankees, those pitches weren't over the middle of the plate. You got to credit hitters the hitters for making those hits for getting those hits with some good hitting. Sometimes you got you know you can't blame it on the pitcher that, that those, that's good hitting right there. Something happens. It's not always because something went wrong. Sometimes somebody did something right. Right. Left center field and deep. Alex to the track to the wall and Derek Jeter has a two run home run. To make it a four run seventh inning, all runs coming with two outs. Okay, now that was a hanging curveball. Watch how it stays up for Derek. Just a little bit of a tap, waiting on it, and hitters' eyes light up when they see one up there. So with a runner at first and two outs and the eight and nine hitters coming up the Yankees turn it into a four run inning and now Tim Collins jogs in and a Chevy call to the bullpen.
run seventh inning and Jeter is six out of nine in the series knocking Bruce Chen out and bringing Tim Collins in. Our copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Kansas City Royals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Kansas City Royals Baseball Corporation. Branderson muscles it out into right center field on the first pitch from Tim Collins that makes Granderson one for four. Tim Collins pitched the last two games in the Detroit series and as the bullpen comes on here in the seventh inning tonight we should point out that over the last thirty one and two thirds innings for the Royals bullpen that goes back to the beginning of the last road trip they have allowed six earned runs that is a one point seven one ERA. All one to Mark to Tim Collins has been right in the middle of that bullpen turnaround. Nothing wrong with those numbers. Good hard fastball. And a big biting curve. Change up. Occasional change ups. Mm -hmm. Nice one. To share up at 227 when the game started. And just five hits in his previous 38 at bats hit a two run home run against Bruce Chen. Grounded to Escobar. He'll go the short way, gets, comes off the bag, and then tried to tag it with his glove. But Granderson was hustling, and the Yankees are still alive. That'll be an error charge to Alcides Escobar, his third of the year. Yep, a little bit. Too much open when he threw that ball. He opened up his front side a little bit and then pulled the ball over. Benson tried a good job to go back. Watch how his left leg opened up just a little bit too much there and he pulled the throw. So it means that all nine will bat in the inning. Alex Rodriguez is the DH tonight. For the eighth time this year. Single to left field in the fourth inning. Change up for strike one. It's a good pitch against right handers. Change of speed, he's thrown two. Perfectly located. Oh, and two. He looks like he's just a little off. Doesn't he? Alex? Yeah, I haven't seen a good swing yet in the first two games. No, and that's just fine. Hopefully he stays that way for two more games. Like I said last night, that, that critical 3 2 pitch that Broxton threw him was a slider right out over the middle of the plate. And he nubbed it in the stocks. It was about a year ago, the Royals were in New York. And they won the series. And Alex Rodriguez was not hitting well at the time, but you could tell he was really close. And the Royals felt like they got out of New York at just the right time. And sure enough, in the next two series, he just tore the ball to pieces. Granderson and to share a run as Rodriguez strikes out to end the inning. The Yankees come up with four, all with two outs, to lead 6-2.
Yankees lead the Royals 6-2. Panera takes us around the league. Cleveland beats Texas 6-3. to A couple of home runs from Chu and Hanahan. Detroit beats Chicago by one run. Baltimore and Boston all tied up. Tampa Bay, big performance from David Price, who had 12 strikeouts. Toronto and L.A., Minnesota and Seattle still to come. Ryan? Stockas leads off the seventh inning, and CC Sabathia has a four run lead. Gave up RBI doubles to Gordon and Frank Coor in the first. And no run since. In fact, Sabathia, since the two run first inning, has retired 16 of the last 18. He's on a roll. Tough guy to beat. 3 0 already. Typically a slow starter. But I talked about earlier about how he holds that glove right in front of him and it's this, it's the same position. He doesn't move the fingers in or anything. It's always the same wide glove to try to disguise because he knows the hitters are, are watching him go into his glove. Stroked up the right field line and that's fair. So in a four run game Ustakis will stop at second with a double after striking out in his first two at bats and now Ustakis has hit in seven straight. Okay, this ball was right over the middle of the plate. Perfect short swing right on the chalk. Now if the game is a little closer tie game you might see him try to stretch that into three but down four you're not going to do that. Look at that nice easy swing. Good turn. Even though he didn't look very good in his first two at bats against Sabathia had a good swing there and Moustakis has had a good year for the Royals against left hand pitching. That makes him. Six out of 14. Brian Pena. And Nunez plays it in the hole. Brian is 0 for 3 1 down. He's hit the ball hard every time up. Hit the third baseman twice. Actually, I think all three times the third baseman. Nice hitting, just no no luck. Okay. Fox Saturday baseball returns this week when Paul Canerco and the White Sox head to Detroit to take on Prince Fielder and the Tigers. Fox Saturday baseball this week at 2:30 p.m. Central. Gets is struck out and lined out to left. Up the middle. And Cano going to have to hurry. The throw is wide to Sheriff. Saves an error. Moustakis goes to third. And a run. That's what a great first baseman will do. And it gives confidence that Cano can try to make a play like that and just fling it over there. He knows that ball's not going to get by him. That's an infield hit. Knowing the base runner gets runs well, sometimes on a play like that, you just want to put that in your pocket. Cano thought he had a chance. By not throwing it, you know, you don't want to throw one away, but good glove work. No well, Rex here's where we go back to your keys for the Royals against Sabathia and when they get an opportunity for a big hit they're going to have to cash it in down by four and. Running out of time strike one to. Alcides Escobar. Doubled. In the second inning and stole third. Rounded out to third in the fifth. Little bit inside one and one. First time the Royals have had more than one base runner since the first inning. Grounded to Cano. Out at second. Jeter to first and Sabathia 
gets out of the seventh inning as the Yankees turn their first double play. For Jeff Montgomery getting ready for Boulevard Royals Live. It is also a fireworks Friday. We'll bring you some of those sights. Break down the action. Bruce Chen, good start until the seventh inning. We'll talk about that. Highlights, reaction from Ned Yost. And we'll take a look at tomorrow's pitching matchup. Hiroki Corona, the former Dodger. And Felipe Paulino ready to make his first start of the season. His rehab went well, so he's strong and ready to go. We'll have that much more coming up after the game. Ryan? All right, Joel, thank you. As we have another Chevy call to the bullpen, and it's Lewis Coleman. Coleman last year with his first big league season with the Royals. Picked up one of his milestones against the Yankees. He had one save all year long, and it was in New York on May 11th. Robinson Cano on a slider. Hits it up into the steam and the humidity will carry it all the way to the warning track. Frank Hoare makes the play and Cano is one for four. Coleman finished last year one win and one save. And interesting about those two games the save at Yankee Stadium was an 11 inning game and helped the Royals take two out of three. In New York, the Royals hadn't won a series there since 1999. And then he got his first major league save at Boston in a 14 inning game. 0 and 1 to Andrew Jones. Lewis has a deceptive angle. Sweeping slider, he'll use fastball and a changeup. There's a little nice slider there. Pitches and Coleman strikes out Andrew Jones. Good sweeper. Started in the middle of the plate, fooled the batter, got him off balance. It's all about balance. Pitcher tries to stay on balance on the rubber so he can execute his pitches. If he's off balance, he leaves something up to hit. He wants to get the hitter off balance. Dwayne Wise will pinch hit for Jason Nix. Fellow that's bounced around with a few big league clubs. When Mark Burley threw his perfect game against the Tampa Bay Rays, Dwayne Wise not only saved the perfect game, he saved a no hitter and a shutout, robbing a home run late in a perfect game. 
up the left field line. That's fair. Alex gets to it quickly, but his momentum takes him into foul ground, and Wise has a two out double. Yeah, when I saw Wise on the roster, I thought about that immediately, and not only was it a spectacular catch as you see him fight that fastball off down the line, but Ozzy Guillen put him in for a defensive replacement in the ninth inning. So he just got in the game. You talk about how the ball will find a guy that just gets put in the game. It found he found the ball. <laughs> I was gonna say, that ball found the seats, but Dwayne Wise found the ball. There's nothing wrong being remembered by that in your career. I like this guy Eduardo Nunez. He he would be a, a, a starter every day on another big league team. Very steady in the field. He can play third and short. They probably play some second if they needed him to. But he's a shortstop by trade. That's that's his most comfortable position. Sometimes you just gotta wait your turn and see what happens. Well, remember last year we discussed this last night when Derek Jeter was struggling and eventually injured a calf muscle, went on a rehab assignment. Nunez filled in nicely at shortstop, and there were some Yankee fans who wondered if it wasn't time for Jeter to pass the torch. Obviously, we know now that it was a good decision for Jeter to hang in there. He's one of the hottest hitters in the world right now. And finished strong in the second half last year. He had been 0 for 19 when he tripled in the go ahead run last inning. Still 2 and 2. Talked about how he's been pretty clutch this year, too. Going four for five with a runner in scoring position early this year. And Lewis Coleman's got him off balance, throwing hard fastballs in, sweeping breaking balls away, and see if he can figure out a way to get this guy. He's might start him to get hot again. The last big double he hit. Three and two. A rally that really got going with the bottom of the Yankee order. Bruce Chen gave up a single to Cano, but then got two outs. And the Yankees had a runner at first with two down with the eight and nine hitters coming up, but Nunez tripled in a run. Stewart singled in a run, and then Jeter hit the two run home run. Left field. Alex is back. And that's the inning. Lewis Coleman turns in a scoreless eight.
six outs to go on offense. The Royals have won five of their last seven games. And in our sprint, you call it question tonight. What has helped the Royals the most during this run? And 53% agreeing with Rex. Defense. Nine double plays turned over that stretch. The Royals have also turned two double plays tonight. CC Sabathia, that was pitch number 96. This is the fourth time through the order for the Royals. Gerard Dyson is one for three with a first inning single and a run scored. He before Mike Mustox's double last inning. I was talking about CC in his glove, how he holds that glove there, and I wanted to compare it with another great right hander in the game and show the, the same thing that these guys have figured out these hitters a little bit to where we try not to give them anything. Tyson lays down a bunt. Cano hustles over to first, and to share it gets it over there for the out. Yeah, that's a, that's an excellent bunt drive right there. Okay, but let's look. Okay, look at Verlander on your left. Watching how he holds his throat wide open like that. CC same way, wide open. Okay, they're hiding their their glove or the ball right in the glove, and they both start taking it. And hitters watch all of that because they're trying to pick up the ball, the release point, any kind of movement they might do. So Alex Gordon with one out. One for three with a double and an RBI in the first inning. Now I've got my glove up here. So what you're saying is that some pitchers will make the mistake that while they're gripping, they might twist or they might turn or wiggle your finger on a breaking ball. Your finger showing oh, right this there. like this. Yeah. Or they might go like this with the or they'll, they'll go like this for for a fastball and they'll widen it out for a, a changeup because they got to get those back three fingers on the changeup. Hitters read that kind of stuff, especially for young pitchers when they haven't really been taught. By the hitters and pitching coaches that hitters watch for that stuff. Just little tendencies how they hold their glove this way for a curveball, this way for a fastball, all kinds of little things that hitters pick up. And this is their profession, and this is how they get paid, so they, they really focus on little things. They'll go back in the dugout and they'll tell the other hitters, they'll say, Hey, I think I got him here. Then they'll go study tape, they'll look, and they call that the pitcher's tipping his pitches. So the good ones they just hold it like that no matter what they're doing right and then inside the glove their hands open up like this right exactly. For example. I'm, I'm up to play with against John Franco John Franco was a closer it was late in the game and they said HUD he's narrow for a fastball okay he's narrow for a fastball and he fans he fans on a changeup so he was. He was narrow the first two pitches, or actually he was he was fanning. Change up, I took it. Change up again just off the plate, I took it. Then he went like this, and I knew the fastball was coming, and I hit a three-run homer. Won the game for us. Just on a little something like that. Good demo with your glove, even though I'm not left-handed. <laughs> two down in the eighth inning. So Sabathia trying to go eight innings in three consecutive starts. He went eight innings on Sunday against Detroit, gave up just two runs, eight innings in the start before that at Texas, 103 pitches and one out away from going eight innings tonight against the Royals. Billy Butler is grounded out twice and struck out. CC Sabathia has won at least 15 games seven times in his career. 11 or more wins 11 times his best season was 2010 he won 21 games he won 21 and 7. And look at it. on his 106th pitch mid 90s. Who does that remind you of speaking of your comparison Verlander. And there's a term that you use for a guy like him or Verlander they call him a horse. He's a horse. That means he's strong. And durable. 
and since joining the Yankees in 2009, Soriano get loose. Since 2009, CC owned 62 starts of at least seven innings pitched and three earned runs or less since he joined them. And the old school pitchers will say that's a quality start. Seven innings, three runs, not six innings, three runs or less. Granderson cuts the ball off. So Sabathia goes eight. And at the end of eight, New York leads the Royals by four. He's a horse. As promised earlier, it's Miller time, and in the spirit of the fans appreciating the Royals' defense over their five and two run, the Royals had two more double plays tonight. Sure did, Bruce. He looked like Bruce. One inning got away from him with two outs, and they got six earned run on him. And I feel bad for Bruce. That, that, that's baseball, though. He'll come back. He'll be back. Well, you mentioned that Bruce got squeezed in his last start against Minnesota, and he's. Not the kind of guy who's going to use that as an excuse. But he did get squeezed. And even though it's tough to ask the Royals to have a big game against CC Sabathia the way he's going. Now the Royals have beaten Sabathia 10 times. But another thing that's hurt Bruce in his quest to win his first game this year has been run support. And now he has made six starts. And in those six starts. The Royals have scored a total of seven runs while he's in the game. Right. But you know what? He won't say anything about that right. either. Not a word. But with a few more runs here or there, Bruce has a couple of wins. And he'll get those. That's one of the challenges that comes with being the number one starter because early in the season, the the rotations will match up for a while where number one goes up against number one and it's it's hard to get run support because the offense is going up against the best in the league. Great point. Stewart flies to Dyson one down in the ninth inning. And now Derek Jeter and if you look very closely at the top of his bat you'll see some flames coming out of it. Two for four tonight with a two run home run and six for nine in the series. He is batting 407. Jeter last year was hitting 257 on July the 9th, and that's when he went five for five against the Tampa Bay Rays, including his 3,000 hit 
And from that point forward, he hit 338. And he was able to carry that into this season. Pena got crossed up by that Coleman pitch. Two and one. Coleman took over in the eighth inning, gave up one hit. Bruce Chen did give the Royals six and two thirds innings tonight. Collins got the final out of the seventh, and now Coleman trying to finish the game off. Three and two. Hey, Derek Jeter in his 17th season has played over 2400 games and he respects the game of baseball. Watch him go. Watch him. Look at that. He went not 90 feet. He went 97 feet. He respects the game. He hustles and plays hard. So for for anybody any of the ball players out there that say oh I'm kind of conserving myself. That's hogwash. That's what George Brett talked about earlier in the fourth inning when he was up here. I like to see guys that could tells me a lot about how they respect the game by the way they go 90 feet. And it always helps when your team captain and your best player when you consider everything offense defense base running in the clubhouse is also the hardest worker. Wow, they got him out three times tonight. Great job, Lewis Coleman. Struck him out. That'll be it for him. Okay, Lewis doing a good job tonight of fastballs in, just like that one. Jeter thought it was a little too far in, but it wasn't. And sweeping breaking balls. Nice job by him. That's what Ned's telling him. Good job. Coleman is out and the Kansas City boy Tommy Hadovy pitches at Coffin Stadium for the first time tonight. And with two outs in the ninth inning, Tommy Hadovy, the Kansas City native, makes his first appearance at Coffin Stadium. Went to Park Hill South High School in Riverside, on to Wichita State, and then in the Red Sox organization. Here's what he's done with the Royals. Sam Mellinger, the Kansas City star, told a great story back in 
May of 2000. Tommy Hadovy was the Kansas City Stars High School Scholar Athlete of the Year. And part of winning that award was that he was going to throw out the first pitch at Kauffman Stadium. That game was rained out. He never got to throw it. And there it is. His first pitch as a Royal at Kauffman Stadium. And instead of a member of the Park Hill South Panthers, it's as a member of the Kansas City Royals. Trying to get Curtis Granderson with two outs and nobody on and keep this at a 6 2 game going into the bottom of the ninth. Two and one. Okay, Tommy hasn't always thrown sidearm. He did that after his surgery. That he had he had Tommy John, missed a little bit of time, and he came back and he started throwing on top like he like he would on top with his throwing arm, and he wasn't comfortable with it. He says, you know what, I'm going to throw down there, and he's d developed himself into a, a fine relief pitcher and a specialty lefty guy, or he can go a little bit long. He's got a sweeping slider. He's going to sweep fastball. And the changeup he'll use, and he will go back on top on occasions with his arm angle. And he gets Granderson to pop it up. Dyson makes the play. So Hadavi gets the job done. The Royals in the bottom of the ninth. Down by four have Hosmer, Francoeur, and Mustakis. Of his heart rate to slow down the Royals fan from Kansas City. He's already pitched for the Royals, but his first Kauffman Stadium appearance tonight, getting a fly ball against Curtis Granderson. And now the Royals in the bottom of the ninth coming up against David Robertson. Okay. This could be the guy. The closer to replace Mariano Rivera for the rest of the season, although that has not been announced and is not official. The Yankees have two guys. This guy, David Robertson, and Rafael Soriano, that can close down games. That's what the fans would like to see. Mariana Rivera, the last major leaguer allowed to wear number 42 when Major League Baseball retired Jackie Robinson's number throughout the game. Those players who are already wearing number 42 could continue to wear it. Rivera is the last. You know, this. Probably not a bad I, bad situation for the Yankees right now. It's a non save situation with four runs and. Joe Girardi eventually is going to have to find a closer but. There would be some. Added pressure if. The first day after they find out Rivera's done for the year it's a one run game and somebody else. Comes in trying to. Can't replace him but you have to fill his role. Well somebody else David Robertson. He's got 
a good fastball, not a, a blazer, and he'll go 87 to 92. But he's got a power curve that's his out pitch, an occasional changeup, and so far this year he's been unscored upon in 11 innings, in 11 appearances. 18 punch outs, so he's got the stuff. One and one to Hosmer. One for three against CC Sabathia with two outs in the sixth inning and the count three and oh. Get a triple off the wall in center field, missed a home run by about a foot. There's some midnight. He's 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 sneaky, but it's his delivery, and the fact that he is 5'11. So one out to Jeff Francoeur, tied the game at two back in the first inning with a two-out double. That's our Mazda replay. Really nice inside-out swing. And that was early on CC. I was a little shocked they scored two in the first off him, but good piece of hit, and they had to get hits off of him in big situations, and they did. And it's that that one inning. It's tough. For Chin. Okay, well, I was talking about he's 5'11, but he throws like he's six foot five. Watch how far he strides out. So he strides out. Okay. Freeze it right there for me. Okay. Stop it right there. Okay, look at how far out he is. Now when he lets go of the ball keep it rolling keep it rolling when he lets go of the ball. He's like a big tall guy because he's closer to the plate by his long stride the way he pushes off. So it's almost like he's pitching from a, a rubber that's closer than 60 feet 6 inches right, by the way he is long stride is longer than most guys at 511 he pitches like he's 6 4. So 94 95 looks more like 97 98 exactly. If we can see a power curve, mm, that's just sneaky quick. And look now, he's been perfect so far this year. But every closer, including the guy he's replacing right now, Mariano Rivera, has been hit. This is the big leagues. You get hit. He'll be under a lot of scrutiny, though. There's no question. In New York, after he does blow a save. And this is not a save situation. There's a curve. It wasn't. It didn't start up as high, so we didn't get to see the depth on it. But that's a hard biter. I remember reading a story, and I just looked it up. And it was Tom Verducci of Sports Illustrated. He was doing a story on Tim Lincecum, who's a small pitcher for the San Francisco Giants, and has won a couple of Cy Youngs. And they were talking about his mechanics and specifically his stride. And the research showed that the normal stride length for a pitcher is somewhere between 77 and 87 percent of the pitcher's height. So they almost stride three quarters or a little bit more of their actual height. Well, Tim Lincecum, who is about 5'10, he strides 129 percent. Of his height, his stride is seven and a half feet. As Francoeur strikes out, and that's two for Robertson in the ninth inning. Okay, in contrast, this look at the greatest closer of all time, and maybe one of the best pitchers of all time. Look at he gets out there, but he gets out over his front knee. He's got a little bit more of a bend. Okay, he's got a little more bend, and he gets over that front side, and he gets it all done with one pitch, a cutter, a cut fastball, and he'll very the speeds on that it makes it look different and changes that but there's the different styles now. We'll see Robertson. It's a little bit more stiff front side. Didn't quite get out over the front but the whole point is is that he strides so far out there he pitches taller than he is. Mustak has doubled in the seventh inning he has a seven game hitting streak. 
Now you hear about pitchers over striding and then their arm drags behind and they're not able to follow through. So what does a pitcher have to do to compensate for that long stride and still get zip on his pitches. He has the time when he breaks his hands he's got to get up on top of it. he's got to really really concentrate on staying on top of the ball and not getting his body out ahead of his arm. He's got to keep his arm on top so it doesn't drag. So give us a little demonstration of what can go wrong if you don't do it right. Body gets gets out front, your arm falls behind, and you leave the ball up in the zone. It's hittable. So you kind of break your hands, come here, and stay on top and come down, and then you down and strike. As Robertson just did, strikes out the side and maybe an audition for the closer's role. A four-run seventh inning for the Yankees. Derek Jeter hitting a two-run home run to cap it. And New York is even the series at one game apiece. We'll be right back.